Hey everyone. If it's okay with you, I want to share with you a really important piece of advice I learned from someone. And that's that age only matters if you're wine or cheese. And okay, I'll admit, I'm not quite old enough to tell you where the wine gets better with age, but I am here to tell you why age should be no constraint to learning or to teaching. Aside from the everyday problems in life, such as picking just one flavor of ice cream or finding that perfect Wi-Fi signal or queuing outside in the rain to get in this morning, we are in the midst of some real problems. We are now four years into our 17 Sustainable Development Goals, as defined by the UN, and we still have a long way to go. We have until 2030 to curb the effects of climate change before they become irreversible. Absolute poverty is still a real issue, and we are still seeing the need for policies such as GDPR to help protect our privacy. With such problems swirling around, it can be easy to see the reasons why we have terms such as eco-anxiety popping up in our dictionaries. As the name suggests, eco-anxiety, similar to regular anxiety, has the effects of nervousness, difficulty sleeping, problems breathing, but caused by fear of the state of our environment. With so many problems around, sometimes we don't know where to start. But among all those headlines, you may have heard the name Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old schoolgirl from Sweden who's changing the way that we approach climate activism. What started as her leaving school on Friday and protesting outside the Swedish government has turned into 1.4 million people worldwide protesting for climate change activism. Or what about Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, the 29-year-old US Congresswoman making waves in US politics with her progressive reforms, great social media presence, and reasoned response to critics? In a world where there are more men called Dave leading FDSC 100 companies than there are women, it's great to see young women at the forefront of change. And on the subject of politics, let's talk Brexit. I'm sure you thought you'd managed to make it speaking to someone from Britain who didn't talk about Brexit. But today is not quite that day. <laughs> With a final vote of 52 to 48, Brexit was one of the most divisive votes in British history. But look closer, and the picture is vastly different. Though the majority of over 65-year-olds voted to leave the European Union, 75% of 18 to 24-year-olds wanted to remain. And that's not including the close to 1.5 million young people who weren't able to vote at the time, but now are. There are few things that anger me more about British politics than the helplessness that one feels at the situation which is why you'll understand my surprise when I received an invite from the Future for the Institute of Work, which was inviting me within the House of Commons to talk about in a youth think tank about education, automation, and innovation. If an entity so important as the House of Commons can recognize the need for youth involvement in policy making, surely there's a case for it elsewhere. But sometimes it can be complicated to look at a political picture. So let's step into a talk into the corporate realm. Reverse mentoring, as made popular by the CEO of General Motors, Jack Welch, in 1999, is a process by which young members of a company, the Gen Z and the Millennials, take on board the task of educating the older generation, the sweet seat members, the executives, the board members, teaching them about the trends, tools, and techniques that they can use in this phase of the digital age. Not only is this making use of the resources already available to them within the company, but the shift in power encourages innovation and fosters diversity. Technology is moving so fast, if you blink, you'll miss it. In fact, according to a recent study by CEMS, hundreds of business graduates identified rapid technological change as one of the greatest leadership challenges. But who better than the millennials who are at the forefront of this innovation to lead the way? Not only do the older members benefit from added knowledge and expertise about exactly what they need to do to keep up and keep ahead of the technological advances, but it helps young people see a sense of fulfillment in the job that they're doing. According to the 2018 Deloitte Millennial Survey, 43% of millennials are planning on leaving their job in the next two years. But millennials are now the greatest part of our workforce. We need to keep them in their jobs. 
Reverse mentoring helps with this. Not only does it provide a great networking opportunity of high-level experts that they can refer to, it helps them see a path and future career where they're working. And it helps them see that the investment they are putting in their firm is being reciprocated back to them. It shows them that the firm cares. What we're seeing is that refined work practices lead to real better improvements in the product offering and business success. Over the last 20 years, we've seen innovations such as reverse mentoring come in and impact the way that we're working. And similarly, processes such as agile methodology are now being used to change the way in which we work. Think of a traditional way of working. We start with design. We move on to the processing, creating it, testing, product. But you can't move over to this side. You can't move on to the next task until you've absolutely finished the task before, completely finalized. It's slow, it's tedious, and firms are growing increasingly annoyed at the, this way of working, turning more and more to the agile cycles, fostering innovation, and being aware of change and learning constantly. The summer I turned 16, I was fortunate enough to work at one of these big companies using agile for a summer. I was amazed when I walked in at the respect that I had in walking in and how everyone seemed to care and wanted to learn from everyone. By the end of the experience, not only had I learned so much from the people around me, but I really felt as though I'd been able to contribute myself. I'd taken real tasks off their backlog, I'd run testing script, designed things, I'd been able to help. It taught me that closed-mindedness doesn't give you any benefit. But being open-minded can really help you learn from unexpected places and give you a fresh perspective you didn't realize you could have. And this is not just restricted to traditional ways of working. Think of something like Gen Z consulting. Isn't it exactly in this circumstance where young people have the most knowledge to share? Status quo says that young people will always be the ones learning from the older generation. But sometimes this isn't the case. Take Nadia Okamoto, for example, a 20-year-old founder of her own nonprofit who works towards solving period poverty after experiencing homelessness for herself. Now currently on leave at Harvard University, and four years later, her nonprofit has over 400,000 chapters across the US. She's worked with the Obama Foundation, written her own book, she's run for city councilor in Boston, and ironically, spoken at TEDx. What Nadia is doing, in essence, is empowering a whole generation of young people, girls and boys, to work towards solving the problems that matter most to them. What we're really seeing is empowerment theory in action. Empowerment theory is the process by which individuals, groups, or organizations work towards improving their situation or the situation of others to work towards their goals. For firms, this is a great way of raising an employable generation of people who they want on board. And for the young people, it has the same effect. They see and identify the companies who really care about them and are working for them. For governments, empowerment practices such as microfinance schemes or investment for entrepreneurs is a great way of allowing their citizens to help themselves and not rely on government institutions to do that for them. It can help find them more better job opportunities, better wages. It can help them feel a sense of satisfaction in what they're doing. It can improve the living standards and the happiness of people. Us young people are often taught and often told that we are all young ones, and that's true. And someday we will be the older generation telling this to our kids and our grandkids and looking down to the younger generations for hope. But right now, we all have something to offer at every stage of our life. Whether that's influencing major political reforms, maybe we're changing the way that we work in corporate climates, or perhaps we're looking at the biggest world problems and finding solutions. No matter what we're doing, young people have a role everywhere to contribute. And whilst in Rome, I'll end with a little word from Leonardo da Vinci. Learning never exhausts the mind. So stay curious, be open-minded, and be ready to learn from everyone.